Extreme wind and rain lash Taiwan as super typhoon Kongrei makes landfall. North Korea launches a new intercontinental ballistic missile as it deepens security ties with Russia. We are not going back. With the U.S. presidential election just around the corner, some say the country is ready for its first female leader. Plus, using innovative technology to clean up Thailand's oceans. Hello, and welcome to Taiwan Plus News. I'm Eric Gao. Thanks for joining us this evening. We begin with updates on Typhoon Kongrei, which has been sweeping across Taiwan since early afternoon. At least one person has been killed and over 70 hurt in the largest storm to strike Taiwan since 1996. Dramatic footage from across the country shows the strength of the rare late season storm as it lashes Taiwan with strong winds and rain. Work and classes have been suspended across the country. Over 500 international and domestic flights have been canceled and Taiwan's emergency command center is warning that the severe weather conditions are expected to continue throughout Thursday evening with a high risk of landslides and flooding. Heavy rain warnings are in place for much of the country. After moving through southern Taiwan on Thursday afternoon, the storm is expected to move northwest across the country over the course of the evening, eventually weakening and heading north over the Taiwan Strait on Friday. Now, reporter Rick Lauert has been following the storm's progress throughout the day from Taidong on Taiwan's east coast, where the typhoon first made landfall. Rick, how are things looking there now? Well, it's been a few hours since the typhoon made landfall here on Taiwan's east coast. But Typhoon Kongwe is still packing quite a punch. Wind speeds of about 100 kilometers an hour here in downtown Taidong and steady rain. The typhoon's eye wall, that's the center of the typhoon with those really powerful winds ripped through this city throughout the day. And it left in its trail devastation. We've seen many trees down across the city, lamp posts, telephone wires, bits of buildings torn off, strewn across the street. We've spent the day reporting from this small agricultural city that's been facing up to this rare storm. Typhoon Kongrei lashes Tai Dong. Sitting between the mountains and the ocean, this is one of Taiwan's most important agricultural hubs. Its fields and orchards now wrecked by the biggest typhoon to hit in decades. The city streets largely empty. Schools and offices closed for the day. Taiwan's east coast is regularly battered by tropical storms throughout its summer. But Kongrei is the largest in size to make landfall here in 26 years. Gusts have been reaching 200 kilometers an hour uh, here in the center of Taidong as Typhoon Kongrei rips through the city. Those extreme winds have been downing trees, traffic lights and electrical wires. The county government has put emergency services on their highest alert and issued evacuation notices for mountainous areas at risk of landslides. A warning local officials hope is heeded. Both officials and residents here hope they have done enough to prepare for this storm. The farmers still sheltering in place, waiting for morning to assess the extent of the damage wrought on their land by Kongrei. Typhoon Kongrei is massive and its outer rims are expected to carry on bringing big winds like this for the next few hours. It's going to be another uneasy night for the residents of this small city that's found itself in direct fire of this deadly typhoon. Thanks, Rick. Stay safe out there.
That was Rick Lauer reporting live from Taidong. Typhoon is also wreaking havoc in Elan on the northeast coast. Tipting Wong was there. We're in Wuxigang Harbor here in Elan County, and this is usually a popular surfing spot. But as you can see, nobody is out on the waves today. That's because of Typhoon Kongrei. It's brought in waves up to 7.2 meters high, uh, as well as wind speeds over 100 kilometers per hour. There's also reports of flooding in the streets, as, rain, as well as rainfall in the mountainous areas up to 1.2 meters high over the past 24 hours. Now, because of just how strong this wind and rain uh, is, uh, the county has even stopped its public buses since this morning. And this area is also known for its fishing industry. So last night, they grounded some 275 fishers, uh, as well as evacuated 400 people from their homes, just trying to make sure everyone is as safe as possible. Now, county officials are expecting the storm to pass over uh, throughout today uh, and leave around tomorrow morning. Uh, but until then, this is still a landslide prone area. They're expecting even heavier winds and rains throughout the day. Uh, and they're hoping that this unseasonable storm will just pass by quickly, leave as little damage as possible so that everyone can just shake it off and get back to life as normal. That was Tiffany Wong reporting from Elan. And as Kong Rui makes its way across the country, authorities here in Taipei are monitoring the situation closely. And that's because much of the capital is in a low-lying basin that's prone to flooding. To keep the water at bay, the city is equipped with a series of flood control measures. Chris Gorn has more. This is the Xincheng Jiangou Water Pumping Station. It's one of dozens of water pumping stations in Taipei designed to keep flooding off of the city streets during periods of intense rainfall like this typhoon. Much of Taipei's urban center sits in a basin between two rivers, the Jilong and Danshui rivers. And the elevation in this area is only about 10 meters above sea level, so flooding is a big risk. The city has built flood walls with closable gates along most of the riversides in the city. Now, those gates are closed today because the river's water level is especially high. That's in part because the pumps move water from designated collection areas in the city back into the rivers or to emergency reservoirs. This, along with other measures like diversion channels and levees all work together to keep flooding to a minimum. Even with all these measures in place, flooding still can happen. So Taipei residents need to remain vigilant and be prepared for anything. Scott Huang, Leon Lian and Chris Gorin for Taiwan Plus. Now, Kong Rei is causing further damage in areas that have already suffered from other disasters earlier this year. But with the intensity of this typhoon, President Lai Qingde is already promising help for storm victims. John Van Trieste reports. Rock slides, mud slides, and flooding. Hualien County on Taiwan's east coast has seen plenty of all three over what's been a rough typhoon season. And even now, at the end of October, it's not over as Typhoon Kong Rei barrels straight into the country. Trains are shut, and in some areas, roads are washed out too. In the county's rugged interior, rock slides have hit homes too. Residents of at least two indigenous villages in Hualien County's mountains have had to evacuate. There were similar scenes in many areas as schools and businesses nationwide shut for the day. As the typhoon landed, other transport services, like parts of the Taipei Metro, shut down too. And over 200 flights were canceled from Taoyuan International Airport. Meteorologists say this is not a typhoon to be taken lightly. <laughs> The military is not taking chances. It's wrapped up a week of drills early and is shifting troops to disaster relief. And at a virtual meeting with local officials across the country, President Lai Qingde said it's already time to start thinking about recovery and reconstruction. And Lai said that means not just physically rebuilding damage, but also economic relief for farmers who face ruin from the latest in a string of powerful typhoons to hit the country in what's been a stormy year. Ethan Chen and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. 
South Korea has announced new export controls on materials needed to make missile fuel. That's after North Korea launched a new kind of advanced intercontinental ballistic missile. Japanese defense officials say this weapon flew further and longer than any other test. And it comes as North Korea and Russia deepen their security ties. Jaime Okon has more. In a landmark test for North Korea, Pyongyang has launched one of its most advanced weapons yet. Japanese defense officials say an intercontinental ballistic missile launched early on Thursday used a new kind of fuel, allowing Pyongyang to shorten the time needed to prep and fire the weapon. The launch comes as U.S. and South Korean forces are carrying out joint military exercises using attack helicopters to practice hitting targets. The two allies have boosted security cooperation following new intelligence showing North Korea has dispatched troops to Russia to support its invasion of Ukraine. The move is prompting concern from the U.S. The evidence now suggests that North Korea has sent around 10,000 soldiers to train in eastern Russia. And some of these DPRK troops have already moved closer to Ukraine. We urge the Kremlin to change course. We fully understand the security implications for both Europe and the Indo-Pacific. Russia is defending the move, saying that if the West is assisting Ukraine, Moscow should also be able to receive aid from Pyongyang. But analysts in South Korea say the North's decision to send troops could have a knock-on effect on security in Asia, as it increases the possibility of Russian forces assisting North Korea in the event of a war. South Korea and the U.S. say the North is gearing up for its seventh nuclear weapons test, with many saying the test could come ahead of the U.S. presidential elections. While it's not yet clear how Russia plans to use North Korean troops, security cooperation between both sides looks set to continue. Andy Shre and Jaime Okun for Taiwan Plus. With less than a week until the U.S. presidential election, the tight race has Kamala Harris and Donald Trump fighting for swing states. Both candidates held rallies in the crucial battleground state of Wisconsin on Wednesday. Harris called her opponent unstable and obsessed with revenge, while Trump hit back at President Joe Biden's comment that seemed to call Trump supporters garbage. A CNN poll shows Harris with a slight edge over Trump in Wisconsin and Michigan, but in Pennsylvania, the two are neck and neck. In just a few days, Harris could be making history as the first female president of the United States. At a time of deep division, some local politicians and citizens hope that it will be her who rises to the top to unite the country. Joyce Sun reports from New York. New York State Senator Ewan Chu is feeling hopeful about the upcoming U.S. elections. An immigrant from Taiwan, the former journalist is the first Asian-American woman elected to the over 200-year-old state Senate, and she believes the U.S.'s reputation as the leader of the free world needs a Kamala Harris win. Absolutely. About time for us to elect a woman president. She's not going to just become a leader of the United States. She's a leader of the world, and that's a value we need to share with the whole world, how we protect our democracy, how we amplify the freedom. Chu represents predominantly immigrant neighborhoods in Brooklyn, and the beauty of the community, she says, comes from its diversity. It's a center of the universe. Center of the universe. That's how I introduce it. This is center of the universe. I, I represent Brooklyn. But diversity and immigration are points of contention in these elections. And with most Americans perceiving the country's politics as divisive and polarized, many are looking to the next president of the United States to close that gap. 
Democratic presidential candidate Kamala Harris has vowed to be that leader, vowing compassion and understanding against Republican candidate Donald Trump's rhetoric of fear and hate. We are not going back. We are not going back. The California-born daughter of Indian and Jamaican immigrants, the 60-year-old Harris has broken barrier after barrier. She went from serving as California Attorney General to Vice President of the country. Now she stands a chance at becoming the first woman and first South Asian American President of the United States. It's a historic feat that Harris has not focused on in her push for the White House. Instead, Harris has spent her campaign speaking to voters' urgent concerns like the cost of living. She's pitched policies like building more affordable housing and cutting the cost of groceries, all to create an opportunity economy where people, regardless of their circumstance or background, can benefit from social mobility. But unlike in New York, a Democratic stronghold, Harris remains locked in a dead heat against Trump in decisive battleground states. Her supporters remaining optimistic that she will nonetheless prevail come election day. We need her. She's the one for our moment, for this moment. Uh, sure, it might be uncomfortable. She is a woman. She is um, African American, Asian descent. But I feel like Asian culture and African American culture, like you know, very mainstream parts of a. Uh, American culture now. So I do think people are ready for her in a way maybe they wouldn't have been ready 20 years ago. While voters in this blue state are more willing to embrace Harris, academics say it'll be tougher to sway conservative voters across the country and overcome deep rooted sexism. The United States just has a really difficult job of seeing women in these roles because they have been so heavily masculized. So the way that we talk about uh, you know, the framers of the Constitution, we call them our founding fathers. The way that we talk about our president, our president is the father of the nation, right? Like these are very gendered terms that many people have a hard time thinking about women in these positions. Perhaps this is the right time for it. The U.S. government has been becoming more diverse. The number of women in Congress is at an all-time high, with 153 women, about 28 percent of all members. It's also the most racially and ethnically diverse pool of lawmakers in the country's history. For local politicians like State Senator Chu, the key is to pass the torch onwards. I'm the only woman senator, Asian woman senator, in the whole state, 248 years now. It is my mission to make sure our next generation, they have the opportunity, they have the platform, they have the training, be able to be ready for when the opportunity is there, when we need a new leader. It's the same message as Kamala Harris's. She is already the first woman to hold the vice presidency and now potentially the top office and says she will not be the last, pledging to ensure that the United States keeps its spirit as a place of possibilities. Luffy Lee and Joyce Sen in Brooklyn, New York for Taiwan Plus. We'll be checking in with our teams on the ground in the U.S. all the way through Election Day on November 5th. Tune in every day for those reports. Now coming up after the break, flash flooding in Spain kills at least 95 people. Stay tuned. A pivotal election that will impact Taiwan and the world. Will it be President Harris or President Trump? We are moving forward. Make America great again. I'm in the United States in the final stretch. Before Taiwan Plus has you covered with exclusive reports from California to Texas and Washington to Florida. We'll be there on election night as America decides. Only on Taiwan Plus. Welcome back. You're watching Taiwan Plus News. At least 95 people are dead and dozens are missing after flash floods hit part of southern and eastern Spain. The government has declared three days of mourning while search and rescue efforts continue. Rosie Greninger reports. Emergency rescuers pluck residents from Cataroja, trapped after parts of southern and eastern Spain were struck by severe flash floods. 
Torrential rain caused the Margro River to overflow its banks and quickly submerge towns and villages. The death toll of the disaster has reached at least dozens of people, making it the deadliest flooding to impact Spain for three decades. Vimos a un joven que estaba en el descampado y se lo llevó la corriente, que estaba encima del coche. Se ve que intentó saltar a otro, pero se lo llevó. Me han dicho gente que estaba agarrando los árboles, pero las fuerzas les hizo soltarse y se lo llevaban pidiendo auxilio. Y nada, y aquí camiones, todo, todo pasaba aquí para allá. The majority of deaths were reported in Valencia on Spain's east coast, the hardest hit area. Meteorologists say a year's worth of rain fell in just eight hours there flooding homes, washing cars down streets, collapsing roads and bridges, submerging farmland and triggering mudslides. Y es que ha estado 10 horas lloviendo sin parar como una tromba de agua pero continua. Y bueno, y los resultados han sido hay poblaciones que te han tenido 500 litros por metro cuadrado en 12 horas y el resultado es lo que ves, eh, estamos incomunicados. No se puede acceder a la parte del pueblo, las carreteras están todas cortadas, puentes cortados. Puentes que han desaparecido. Similar scenes in the southern region of Andalusia, where debris is scattered down streets. Those conditions are hampering urgent rescue operations, where workers are searching for dozens of people still unaccounted for. Parece ser que hay varias personas que desaparecieron. Cuanto más horas se pasen, es más difícil que se encuentre con vida, pero bueno, nunca se pierde la esperanza. Schools have been shut and rail and air links are also affected. The government has deployed a thousand military troops to help, as Spain's Prime Minister promised to do everything possible to help victims. Están trabajando, estamos trabajando de forma coordinada para hacer lo posible y vamos a poner todos los medios necesarios hoy, mañana y el tiempo que haga falta para que podamos recuperarnos de, este, de esta tragedia. No, no os vamos a dejar solos. The European Union has also offered to help. Spanish emergency services are urging all residents to avoid road travel and follow official advice as search and rescue efforts continue. And the threat has not passed. With more torrential rain forecasts for the coming days, residents here are bracing for more devastation. James Lin and Rosie Greninger for Taiwan Plus. Samsung says it will focus on production of AI chipsets to increase profits after its chip business suffered a 40% drop in profit from the last quarter. The chip giant reported a total third quarter profit of 6.6 .6 billion U.S. dollars, down from 7.5 billion in Q2. Competitors TSMC and SK Hynix reported high earnings from AI chip sales to NVIDIA. Samsung issued a rare apology for its low earnings in early October. In sports news, the L.A. Dodgers have been crowned the 2024 Major League Baseball champions. They beat the New York Yankees in five games in a best-of-seven series. The Dodgers clinched the title after a come-from-behind win, beating their opponents 7-6. This is the Dodgers' eighth championship title. The last time they won the World Series was during the shortened 2020 season. Millions of tons of plastic waste end up in the ocean each year. But some new startups are using both old-school labor and new technology to improve recycling. Chris Gorn has the story. Bye, These boats on the island of Koh Chang in eastern Thailand are returning home with their daily catch. Not fish, but plastic garbage. They're working with a startup called Thai to recycle some of the estimated 6 million tons of plastic waste that goes into the ocean each year. It's a problem that can seem endless. Hopefully in the future we can, we can do more because uh, uh, even 200 ton per year that we can collect and for now, is, I, I think it's a really small part of, of, the, of, of this problem. The company is taking a new approach when it comes to proof that it's removing plastics from the ocean. It uses blockchain technology to track the trash from collection to the end user. After paying the collectors for their work, a labor-intensive sorting process begins due to the wide range of discarded plastics. While arduous, the company says this kind of work means it's not necessary to make new plastic. We are convinced there is more than enough plastic on our world 
and we should take what already exists. The final product of all this work is raw plastic pellets, known as nurdles. They're sold to buyers like Condor Group, one of Europe's largest carpet makers. The carpets made with recycled plastic cost as much as 40% more than those made from fresh plastics. But Condor says customers are willing to pay for quality, sustainable products. So we see sustainability not just as a trend, but more as stewardship for future generations to come. You have to start somewhere, and the more products that are being launched and prove that the quality is just the same convince others to switch to. Combining old-fashioned labor with cutting-edge tech, startups like Tide are trying to make an impact on a seemingly intractable problem. And if such efforts are successful, it could represent a new wave in a sea of plastic. Klein Wong and Chris Gorin for Taiwan Plus. For the first time in recorded history, Japan's Mount Fuji remains snowless heading into November. The mountain's iconic snow cap typically forms in early October and then melts in July. Local weather officials say warm weather and high rainfall account for Fuji's lack of snow. Japan experienced its hottest summer on record this year, with 2024 on track to become the hottest year on record globally. Thanks for joining us this evening on Taiwan Plus News. Head on over to our website to see more of our news reports and other programs. Finally, we leave you with more footage of flooding and damage caused by Typhoon Kongrei across Taiwan. I'm Eric Gao. Stay safe out there.